Ever since Comfort got out of the county jail that spring, Maudine had lived in the wreckage of the future. Comfort's newest probation officer, a jolly, tough-loving man named Lundell, told Comfort one bad year analysis stood between her, a neon jumpsuit, and the doors of the women's prison in Lusk. The threat of prison used to iron Comfort out, but now prison didn't seem to scare her any more than a mean dog. Maudine's late tax return paid for the lawyer, the bond, the South Side's lawn, and the Honda's repairs. Deposits to Jaron's savings account were abandoned again. Comfort blasted holes through Maudine's checking account, and her daughter looked, most days, like she declared war on herself, septic teeth and scars shaped like baby crabs along her jaw. With Comfort, hope was a near dead end. The three lived together south of the hospital, in a one-story bungalow sandwiched between two red brick houses that must have been mansions in their prime. As it was summer vacation, Maudine hired Jaron to be his mother's shadow while she refinanced mortgages at the American National Bank downtown. Comfort couldn't find work when half of Cheyenne knew her name from the police blotter. Don't get too discouraged, Lundell advised. Your job is to attend meetings and just stay clean. Keeping his mother out of trouble was a thankless job. Maudine slid Jaron $10 and bought him an old rat terrier named Hog from the pound. They barely compensated. The David Copperfield of druggies, Comfort snuck out the back door or bathroom window while Jaron poured himself a bowl of Lucky Charms or zoned out in front of the television. Whenever he lost track of his mother, Jaron and Hogg would wait on the front stoop for Maudine to come home. Jaron was 11, slowed down by an odd growth spurt, his walnut eyes dewy and hooded, and his big toe poking through the tip of his left sneaker. Maudine loved her daughter, but she didn't like Comfort much. She would have preferred to let Comfort wander home sobered up and a touch ashamed, but Jaron's worry over his mother was like a flesh-eating disease. Grudgingly, Maudine would take Jaron from the Eagle's Nest to the Green Door Go-Go Lounge and most bars in between until he caught sight of his mother. When they didn't find comfort, Maudine almost had fun. They would listen to oldies on AM radio stations, split a bucket of original recipe chicken, and cruise along Lincoln Way as night fell. Figures in heavy coats sank down in the doorways of closed shops, and Jaron would sigh and sigh and ask, How far did you say Lusk is? Seven hours last I knew, and the whole town looks like the back end of hell. On a Friday evening in early August, a man appeared. This was not the first man to track Comfort down to her house, but looking at him through the screen door, all of the summer's woes settled in Maudine's gut. Dusk was less than an hour off, still Maudine noted his spotless, dark-washed wranglers. Though short for Comfort, he was solid as a fence post. Every man he reminded Maudine of had enjoyed being underestimated. When he squinted at Maudine through the screen's mesh, the steely lines of his face gathered at his pointed nose. He had a smile that could skin a deer. He removed his camouflaged baseball cap ceremoniously. Blonde hair streaked with gray looped away from his high forehead like he'd never worn a hat at all. His hands were redder than iron pulled from the forge, and he didn't bother with pleasantries. Where's Comfort? What's it to you? Comfort sang in the shower, lightly fingering the latch, the man took a deep draw of the moistened air. Gardenia, he said. Maudine switched on the porch light. Millers darted out from the wooden slats, and the man batted at them with his hat. I'll wait. Not here, you won't. He looked amused. We got off to a bad start, haven't we? He glanced at his pickup, a white four-wheel drive splattered in red clay, parked up the block beneath a cottonwood that leaned over the street. I'm happy to wait. I don't give a damn what makes you happy. Fair enough. He backed away from the door. But do me a favor, tell Comfort we'll be around for her tomorrow at six, like we planned. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but Comfort must have forgot. We got plans tomorrow, with family. Maudine slammed the door, turned the lock, and peered out the front window until she thought he had driven away. Jaron was in the den playing a video game where spotted mushrooms fell from heaven. Have you seen that man before? Jaron shrugged. Mom's got lots of fans. Cousin Tanner needs another set of eyes on his new mortgage, Maudine lied to Comfort, and she told Jaron, this will keep her out of trouble, and couldn't you use a change of scenery? Maudine had no desire to spend a Saturday afternoon in Elk Mountain, but of their relatives, Cousin Tanner and his wife, Lorna Jean, lived far enough away from Cheyenne's vices and near enough for a day trip Lundell might approve. Lundell said they could go as long as they stayed in state and called when they arrived. He didn't need to remind Maudine about the bond, though he did. It was the axe dangling above her head. 
After an early lunch of deviled ham sandwiches, they loaded into the car. The August sky shined like tin foil, and strong winds had thinned, to blue, and strong winds had thinned the blue-gray smoke from recent forest fires, leaving the atmosphere reasonably clear. Comfort dressed for the heat in jean shorts just long enough to cover her rear end, fringed ankle boots, and a light pink blouse Jaron and Maudine had given her early in the week for her 28th birthday. The drive was excruciating as soon as it began. Maudine did not believe in air conditioning. Like her last husband, she thought it burdened the engine. Heat slithered up from the asphalt and wind stampeded through the car's open windows, rattling the doors and pushing against Maudine's eardrums. Jaron sat behind his mother and Comfort looped her hand into the back seat so that he could hold it. Hogg licked them and occasionally stuck his head out of the window for a dusty gulp. Maudine took Happy Jack Road to avoid semis and summer traffic, but past the Air Force Base, road trippers and construction crews besieged the back road to Laramie. Traffic crawled. Station wagons with out-of-state license plates slowed to snap pictures of ranchettes and Angus cattle sprawled in the field. Means rain when they lie down like that, Jaron said. Does it, baby? How'd you get to be so smart? Comfort hadn't really spoken all day, and her voice, clear and flat as a newly wiped mirror, shocked Maudine. Can we listen to the radio, Mama? Maudine tightened her grip on the wheel. All right, she said, determined to be pleasant. Comfort placed her fingers on the tuner and slowly scanned the stations until metallic, organized sound crashed through the speakers. The racket pounded on Maudine, but she tried to make out the lyrics to attempt, as Lundell stressed, understanding. But what was the singer after? What was he doing? Is he growling? Maudine asked. I was wondering if we could get Jaron some new school clothes. He's been getting so big this summer. Jaron rocked his head to the music. You know things are tight. What, what on earth is he doing? Singing. The Labor Day sales are good sometimes. You want to wait for those? I don't, I don't know what I... It's unbelievable what passes for music these days. Fine. You choose a station. All I want to know is what he's saying. I like my music to make sense. I want to fuck you like an animal. Jaron sighed in the back seat. Comfort let go of his hand and put down the vanity mirror to look at her hair. Maudine couldn't find their favorite station. On the AM dial, there was a talk show about a village in a former communist country where kids made prize-winning robots out of old artillery shells. It's bad for the car, Maudine said finally, and shut the radio off. Whoever heard of radio hurting a car? Comfort sucked a strand of hair. Sometimes I wonder if you make shit up just to irritate me. You used to nag me, remember? Comfort, have you found a job yet? Comfort, how was your meeting with Lundell? Have you eaten anything? What did you eat? Hey, Comfort, why are you taking so long in the bathroom? You act like the wheels are about to fall off if we turn on the AC. Comfort pulled off her boots and stuck her feet on the windshield. Wouldn't be my fault if the tires fell off, Maudine said. A motorcyclist rode the sh shoulder and vanished over the next hill. Now that you're into making shit up, I'm realizing I like the nagging better. Yucca fronds, as sharp as knives, sliced through the plains. Black and pea-green lichen streaked pink, streaked pink boulders that had sat piled on top of one another for thousands of years. Cars can only take so much and heat like this, you know? Didn't know that, Comfort said, but this is just so much fun. I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you. <laughs>